This is just a quick video for Max Grant over in Australia. I was watching his video this morning, about 10 minutes ago, and he's um, putting digital readouts on his uh, Bridgeport. And um, it uh, can be a lot of work to put the scales on. Um, and I thought I would just make a short video uh, showing how I put the scales on mine, which might give him some ideas. I've learned a lot from Max over the years watching his videos. Maybe I can uh, help him out a little bit. Um, I got, uh, my DRO is a uh, Mitutoyo. Uh, I bought this milling machine brand new in 2003 and I put readouts on it as soon as I got it. So <clears throat> that was in the spring of 03. So next spring, these readouts will be 22 years old. Um, I installed them and guarded them really well. And I have not had a single issue with them. I've never had a miscount, never had one not work. I've never had to change anything, never had to adjust anything. Um, if you can keep the scales clean, uh, at least these ones, they seem like they'll last forever. Um, so anyways, I thought I'll just, I have three axis readouts, X, Y, and Z. So I just thought I'd show the, um, how I mounted each one. The simplest one was the X. Um, and, you know, mostly all you can see is the guard, but um, let's see if we can look underneath. Um, the readout head is over there in the middle. This one's actually really simple because the table is ground parallel to the travel, the, the back face of the table, so you can just mount directly to it. And I believe the back of my saddle was machined as well, and so it was already parallel. So all I had to do was mount the bar and uh, make sure it was uh, no run out up or down and then uh, the readout head the scale head I just had to shim it uh, and with mine it came with shims for that purpose so that one was actually pretty easy and then the, the guarding was really simple too it's just a piece of aluminum flat bar and then just a piece of steel flat bar and that keeps everything off you can see underneath the lime green colored thing yellowy thing is the seal lips and they're pretty much spotless and i've never ever cleaned them and they're almost 20 some years old so uh, they're over 20 years old um for the y-axis it was a little bit more complicated uh the knee isn't problem with it is that the knee isn't um, perfectly parallel on its sides. Um, so I came up with it a, a way, it's nothing special, but it, it worked well. Um, and that's to put, uh, just to use a piece of flat bar. I like using aluminum bar. Uh, it's just, it's nice and straight and easy to work with. I found it um, much nicer to work with than, than steel and I've used it on all my machines. Um, but anyways, what I came up with was, um, I drilled the ends and I put two jacking screws in and then a bolt. And I put that at each end and that allows me to, that allows me to do is to get the, um, the bar, uh, you know, this way, get it straight up and down and also to correct for left or right. And you can do all that with the four jacking screws and two bolts. And you just put a dial indicator on the saddle or on the table and run it back and forth. And then when you get it parallel in those two planes, <clears throat> um, then you can attach the readout bar to it. And then all you have to do is get the readout bar, if I can get my arm in here, parallel up and down which is easy to do because the readout bars usually come with a slot, so you have some adjustment on each end. Um, and then uh, the, the next thing is, um, after you've got that done, then it's trying to get um, transfer motion down to the scale head. And you need to be able to adjust in and out and up and down. Um, the scale heads come, at least on the Mitutoyo ones, with a bracket that holds them in place. And then you essentially have to build your bracket up to the scale head and have it fit 
before you release the scale head from the scale by removing the bracket that holds it in place for shipping. And so in this case, uh, I attached to the existing bolts that were in the end of the saddle. Not even sure what those were for anymore, but uh, they were there already, so I used them. And then I just, I, the reason I stepped in like that where I did is because I wanted to get the maximum amount of table travel with my um, power feed. So this step here, I sort of notched it out so I can get the most travel. Um, and then what I did was I slotted the bottom screws so I could move in and out, so I could touch the edge of the readout uh, head. And it, you can't really see it because of the guard, but there's also slots on the vertical part of the angle, which allow the screws that go into the scale head uh, to move up or down as they need to. Uh, so they fit the scale head properly. Uh, it's out of focus, I think. <clears throat> and then the most complicated of them was uh, the Z axis. And I had, at a place I worked before I got this, they had a lot of mills like this and they had readouts on the knee and they always put the scale the opposite way I have it here. They always had the head pointing towards the table and there was no way that they could guard it properly and they always were changing them. They would just get crap in them and they were always having to change them and I just, I did not want to have to do that. Um, so I came up with this way of mounting them with the scale head facing away from the table. Uh, what it entails is, you know, it, it's easy to mount it in any direction you want, but it requires some, you know, fairly involved brackets to transfer the motion of the knee to the scale head. Um, but uh, in, in a similar way, the holes here are actually slots, so this can move in and out as need be. I've actually got slots here, which is a little bit redundant, but um, I was kind of building this on the fly. I've got uh, slots here so I can move in and out. And then I did the same thing here with four, oops, four jacking screws and two bolts. And that allowed me to get the brackets uh, this way so that by the time I got around to here, my surface was, uh, sorry, this surface was parallel uh, to the readout head. So the bracket for the scale head was fairly involved, uh, but it's doable. It's just slots and things like that. It's nothing <clears throat> too complicated. Um, and then the guarding was actually fairly straightforward. And all I did there was I took a piece of um, aluminum angle and I had to machine a tape on it. Maybe easier to see from this side. You can see it tapers down, and that's just to follow the taper of the casting. And then I put uh, silicone. I had a little gap there. I filled the silicone, and I siliconed all the way down at the top. And uh, it uh, worked really well. Um, like I said, 20, almost 22 years with no problems. Uh, the place I worked, I think they were changing scales every two years with them unguarded and the head facing the table. Um, essentially what you need to do is you have to have a way that you can make the scales parallel to the table travel in two planes. And I found that when you're mounting them on a tapered casting or a rough casting, the easiest way was just to make a bar and use jacking screws and a bolt. And that gives you essentially all the adjustment you need. Um, like in this case, uh, if my hand was the, if this is the, the scale that, it, sorry, the aluminum bar the scale's mounted to, I had to make sure it wasn't like this. And that's where the jacking screws and bolts come in. But I also had to make sure that it was not like this. And they took care of that as well. So it's a bit of buggering around but trust me, when you start using the readouts, <laughs> you'll know it was all worth it. They are a fantastic addition to any manual machine. And they just make, um, they don't just make moving stuff around easier. They, they 
they create opportunities that you just don't get with dial things. The, just the ability to move the table completely out of the way and and uh, especially when you have stuff up in a vise and you have a accurately located spot and you have to change tools, it's easier to just move the table over, get away from the vise so you have more headroom, change the tool out and then come back than it is to crank the knee down and crank it back up. Um, being able to do bolt circles, uh, using the bolt circle function. Um, just uh, being able to place holes by doing offsets or mill slots by doing offsets. Find the center, like a keyway. Find the center of the shaft, plow down the middle and rough it out with an end mill that's smaller than the width of the keyway, and then just offset. Go in with an offset, come back out with an offset, and widen the key keyway out. Uh, those kind of things are so easy because you're not concerned about backlash in the screws and having to turn the dials always in the same direction and it just uh, it, it'll just change the way you work and make things efficient and enjoyable <laughs> anyways I hope this helps a little bit Max um, you may already have them on for all I know um, I know videos don't always come out right when they're filmed um, but if this helps in any way I'll be happy because um, I've picked up a lot of tips from watching you over the years so good luck and enjoy your new readouts.